All right, Frost, boys and girls. I emphasize girls because forget this guy in the top right. It is in the lower left corner of the map. Your recent IESF champion, the player for Millennium. It is Metalisk. Of course, possibly uh, one of the better female Zerg gamers that there are out there, just in general. Of course, uh, no one compares to Scarlet. That's a whole nother can of worms but outside of Scarlet I would honest to God rank Madalisk as number one uh, so guys don't uh, get ready she should be able to contend with the SCC we'll see how this goes but of course in the upper right corner of the map playing for complexity down in this series three to four as displayed here in the top right it is the STC so again to reiterate one last time and I don't want to beat a dead horse so I won't keep touching up on it but unfortunately for complexity they took not one but two back to back forfeits which has set them on this match point scenario where if any one of the players at this point is kind of like a mad rush whichever millennium player knocks out the SCC first wins uh, and they also win the series on top of that so the SCC is really playing on a bit of a back burner, so to speak. I like his choice to go for the barracks opening on Frost, especially with a Reaper. It's important to keep up consistency, but against a player like Madalisk, you need to scout. Of course, uh, for Madalisk, she is probably still, despite how good I hold her in regards to the underdog in this series, only because the SCC is renowned for how good his TVZ is. I mean, he was the first guy who really, I feel, not just used, but innovated Widow Mines. Like, when Widow Mines were first introduced, Everybody so terrible is just making like 40 of them, clump them down the middle of the map and watch circlings run over top of them. You had some people even uh, bait, uh, you know, have the Widowmines positioned in a way that the Marines could bait back into it, but the STC was the first guy I saw, at least personally, where he'd spread them out in very tactical locations, put them on the high ground so units under, underneath the side of the cliff on Eklon Waste would run against them, or brush against them. Same sort of thing that could be happened here. You put the Widowmine here and as the circlings flood in, pew! Not to say that that makes him the godfather or the grandfather, rather, of Widow Mines. It's still just kind of cool to get to uh, see his TVZ here once again. So, of course, he just recently had to fight off some TVTs and TVPs. And Madalisk will be the first Zerg challenger he has today. But kind of a small point out of Madalisk, too. I was going to bring up when we started this that this would normally be a map you go three hatch before pull on. But with how aggressive the SCC has been this entire day, I mean, uh, you look back on any of the games, it's not like he sat back and did free win micro, or macro, I should say, not micro. Madalisk, of course, being a uh, someone who's also hanging out in the stream, but also probably studying her opponent at the same time, knows, all right, if I go for a greedy opener, there's a pretty good chance that he comes at me with Reapers, he comes at me with some sort of early push, and I get shut down. So, getting the pull out. She'll probably have that third base down relatively quickly because I've not known Madalus to really be the two base Roach Bane all-in player, but it's always a possibility. Of course, my favorite style at the moment, although it doesn't get the, it doesn't yield the biggest results, is of course Hyun's uh, Roach Banes. But we'll talk about those in a moment as we might have a scuffle in the middle of the map. Reaper giving chase. All right, so this Reaper is not going to go across for the mineral lines and Madalus. Oh, hang on. First blood. Gotta remember to do that. Anyways, Metalisk might not get over here to even scout, which is really unfortunate, but really good for the STC. Downside is, if you send out a Reaper, your build order's already pretty much been predicted for you. Is there's very rarely, if you're gonna gamble, if you're Metalisk, if you're in her shoes right now, and you gotta gamble, chances are this command center was made behind this. Not three more racks, and it's not gonna be like a five Reaper all in or something like that. So this one Reaper now gonna get to the main. Queens have already popped out. The damage this thing could do is limited, but the big thing it needs to do is scout gas timings. And oh, did he just see both of those come down? He did see both of the gases on the way here. So for him, he knows, all right, she's not gonna be playing this really passive style. She's not gonna get that third base really quick. Uh, he's, he's gotta come back for that layer tech scout though. That's gonna be the big tell of whether it's roaches or not. Of course, getting Hellions out for the time being as well gonna give him a bit of map control when he starts poking and prodding at the creep, making sure that he can try and keep it as limited as possible. But Kelly's still on the move. And while they are good in large numbers, two at a time are. Yeah. Alright. Of course, if you ever find a queen out of position, if there's a hole in the wall, so to speak, you can always run past and kill drones. And as long as you get four, that's value. If you get more than four, that's worth. Uh, I love terminology, but anyways, um, coming here, good clip the creep tumors at the very least. Madeline's gonna be shut down in that regard, a little unfortunate, but of course, with the roaches coming out here, it's nothing she can't hold off. Roaches alone, on top of the queens, of course, make it very easy to hold off Hellions. 
and there wasn't like two reapers this wasn't like a dedicated attack i mean how often do you guys see like two reapers six aliens right uh but with one reaper four aliens not gonna get a lot done either full wall off now with that evolution chamber so metalisk should be good Now trying to secure that third. I like that she actually escorted the drone here too, knowing that the Hellions would probably snipe it off if uh, left unattended. Third base for Malice, not out nearly as quick as I expected, but third base on the way in due time, so nothing too bad for her. Lots of racks come down, so we're going to see that bio style. Of course, we saw a lot of mech come out of the SCC today, but that was primarily against Terran. And while you can try and play mech versus Zerg, it's not necessarily the go-to. It's not exactly a fun way to play it out, but... All right, actually, I said the Hellings could take on, could not take on the Roaches. However, when you add in a Banshee to the mix, more power to it. And the SCC also, I want to point out, did not invest gas into this Banshee beyond the initial cost. So, no cloak available, but that's okay because with these Hellions and with the Banshee, he can actually take a Queen fight. And for those who don't know, just straight up one-on-one, -on -one, a Banshee already beats out a Queen. You put in some splash damage, get a little bit of bonus from the ground forces, bam, you break through that wall, no problem. But of course, the biggest thing for the Banshee is not throwing it away. You can, of course, you know, A move if you'd like, but if you do, you have a problem shutting down the third. And of course, recognizing that Matalus canceled, the northern one comes down to check the south. Oh, unfortunately for Matalus, gonna get picked off again. Not enough roaches, I mean, she can engage into this, but she has to bring the queens. There we go, queens not coming with this. Creep spread not quite all the way out, gonna lose another drone, unfortunately, but... I mean, so right now the situation, of course, for Madalus is, oh, I'd love to sit and camp that base and protect it while it builds, but if she does, then the wall is open, then the Hellions run by and she loses her mineral line. So, she's not taking any risks here, but she's also not getting that third base up, which is really unfortunate. Infestation pit on the way, really early here, too. So, I'm imagining, wait, is this going to be Hive? Is she going to Roach Hydra? Hang on, let's back this up. I was so busy concentrating on her trying to get the third base down. I didn't actually look at the tech, but it is, by the looks of things, going to be Roach Hydra versus Bioman. Not a quick Hive for Vipers, but instead an Infestation Pit for Infestors. Without Pathogen Glands, I say a little bit curious, but because she's getting them so early, they will have the time to get the energy they need in order to actually get damage done, whether it's Fungals, Infested Terrans, or what have you. Uh, curiously enough, though, no burrow to go with these, so using the Infestors, of course, can be very delicate, as they're quite fragile creatures. Third base will finally get up by the looks of it, but still poking a prod in the STC, and this whole time he's been kind of dancing with Hellions, he's been dancing with the Banshee, and oh, worth noting, he actually hasn't lost a single unit so far. Oh, gosh. But okay, coming towards the third with these Marines. This is going to make it a little more of a threat than just simply Hellions, just simply the Banshee. But okay, small engagement here. Queens have to retreat immediately behind the Roach line. And unfortunately, while Roaches are good and Hydralists are even better, not in low numbers, and the Marines just walk all over this with Stim. Infestors are now out, though, and Fungal Growths are going to be key. Can he get some good ones off? Or sorry, can she? My mistake. I apologize. Metalus. Can Metalus get some good ones off on top of the bio? There we go. There's the Fungal. Some Infested Terrans may need to come out, too, but looks like, no, the Fungal will be enough. So Madalus holds with those very early Infestors at an awkward timing that the SCC was absolutely not expecting. And we take a look at the resources lost, she actually finally evens it up. So it goes from having no units lost to, uh, quite frankly, even units lost. One way or another, there's a good trade for Madalus because, uh, you know, roaches. You can lose roaches. Who cares about roaches, right? It's all about the expensive units. Roaches are kind of cheap. They're very supply heavy. You eventually don't want them, but... 12 Hydralisks on the way. Oh, boys and girls, if you've never seen a Hydralisk versus Bio, the thing is, it attacks wicked quick. I mean, it's basically a stimmed Marine permanently. Actually, no, I think it's actually Marines while well, stimmed are a little bit faster. I take that back, but its attack is so high. It's got 80 health. It's kind of a glass cannon in that regard, but not against Bio, because Bio is even more of a glass cannon. Fungal growths go down on top of the Metavax, so allowing the Hydralisks can attack, and the Marine line is just getting shredded. Hydralisks, oh, man, you are so good at... Such good units. Backing up though a little bit. Tentative to engage. No more energy for Fungals. Metalist just needs a little more. If she can get another good Fungal off, she cleans this army up, no problem. But unfortunately, not only giving up ground, giving up some creep tumors as well. So that map control going right out the door. Now as she comes, or sorry, as uh, I keep mixing up the pro pronouns here. He, she, it, her, whatever. Anyways, as the STC, the male player in this matchup, if I could get it right for once, comes towards the main. Madalus actually has no vision where he's going to unload. She is going to respond. She knows this is coming, but... Uh, yeah, one good fungal again to lock this down. Cleaning up both the medevacs would be huge. But th let's talk about this for a sec, guys. 
Oh, um. I'll, you know what? I'll worry about that later. Anyways, uh, sorry, Suto. I just don't want to disrupt it. But Madalus coming in with a lot of these Hydralists in the middle of the map, quite exposed with the Infestors behind them. Unfortunately, backing up now into that bio, and the STC is in full retreat. But guys, unloading in the main once again, Madalus forces are completely across the map, would have to otherwise turn around and say, hey, the STC, I'm going to clean up your crap. But unfortunately, she gets uh, completely across the map now. No way to retreat. No night or anything. Pulls the drones. Queen gonna go down. And there's actually nothing at home to defend. 13 roaches on the way, but 13 roaches may not be enough. Big engagement going down inside the base of the SCC. There might be bunkers here, but the Hydralists do not care. Roach Hydra is really strong, and she's got more fungal growth ready to go. Infested Terrans if necessary. But the SCVs were pulled, and unfortunately, Madalus did not back away from them, so... Not that the SCVs did damage, they soaked a lot, and now Madalus forced to back away from this engagement. A really nice attack there from her, but in the end cost her dearly as she's losing the main while this is happening. Good game's gonna be called. Tapping out, the STC will secure another victory, bringing this up 4-4, four to four, putting Millennium now on match points. And if Millennium, uh, they can now actually resurrect any player they'd like. So if they'd like to bring back 4GG, they may bring back 4GG. Oh, cool. So, um, you guys were asking earlier, we just finally got the updates to the emails. Zombie Grub will not be casting DreamHack with me, sadly, QQ, because she'll be casting on her own stream. So, uh, you'll have Bay Street TV and you'll have Rifkin, uh, or, or sorry, you'll have Bay Street TV and you'll have Zombie Grub casting uh, DreamHack. So, separate matches, but covered by all. Cool, cool. But, uh, yeah. Unfortunate for Matalisk, it was a desperate. Last attack, just barely couldn't do it. Just barely, too, because that was really close. But in the end, of course, the SCC uh, seals the deal. We'll see who gets resurrected. I'm imagining 4GG. It almost has to be 4GG, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, guys, don't go anywhere. We're going to play some ads, and we'll see you in a moment. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching my YOLO cast, as poor as it is. And uh